What's going on, party people? It's time for the Anarchy Analysis to hit the group stages of spring. Best of threes, a new patch, and a whole lot of crazy action is coming up this weekend, where who knows what will happen. We've got four best of three series to cover in this video that we can, with two on the horizon for Monday. But before we get into that, we'll go over the results from, not last week, the week before, because groups came quicker last time, let's be honest. Regardless, day one, which was <laughs> on my notes that we covered, day three, two out of five, we picked up the Koi in XL and the Fnatic Mad series. Day two, ah, Fnatic G2. We didn't pick up, we only got one out of five. <laughs> and then day three, three out of five, we dropped the SK and the Mads best of ones. Giving us a total of six out of 15, which is below the 50% margin that I'm comfortable with. I'm sad about that. Anyway, let's get into our first prediction. Our first best of three sees Mad. Taking on Vitality, this is going to be interesting, and in fact, all of these series happening, I think, are very hard to predict. This is probably the most I've struggled in picking results to series, that's for sure. I'll be brutally honest, not every game this split have I predicted out-and-out 2-1s. Out I've got a few 2-0s this weekend. And this is not one of them, this is a 2-1 prediction. And the reason I think it's going to be that close is because new patch vibes. I think MAD are a team that excel better at the start of a patch. And here, they've, they'll probably be the freshest on this patch. I think there's certain teams who struggled during the regular season who I think were more prepping for this playoff set of champions and I think Madden the sort of team that are it's there's another team that we'll get to at the end of this video who I think are in a similar boat but regardless Mad did say they were experimenting with picks to see how normal comfortable picks that they use would actually work out for them and here coming into playoffs I think that they will be better adapted to this and more comfortable. As for their opponents, Vitality, they, in the last weekend, had a bit of a struggle, in the sense that they got a 2-1 week. What am I on about? They didn't struggle. I felt they struggled, though. I felt a lot of struggle from this squad in certain games. And this matchup here, I think, will be a good test for Vitality. This team, on paper, is probably going to win this split, or finish second. And I think that Vitality will win this best of three, 2-1. And that will do actually some interesting things to um, how MSI seeding will work. Because if Mad get eliminated round one of the group stage, or they're not one of the four teams that make it out, that would mean that they essentially are out of contention for MSI. And if G2 win the entire split, if Koi make it past round one into round two, then they will be literally the second seed for uh, MSI, which I kind of want, because Koya is sort of a team that do well at internationals, especially last year, the only team from Europe to make it out into the quarterfinals. But uh, I'll be honest, here against this squad here, Vitality, I think if they go on to win this convincingly, it's hard to doubt them when it comes to the rest of the split. 
I think that they have a very good chance of obviously winning it all. I think you look at that bot lane and the synergy that Kaiser and Upset are building up is actually phenomenal. And I think it's a huge factor in why we're seeing success out of this roster. But regardless of that, my prediction is a 2-1 Vitality win. Let's move into our second series. And series is Fnatic taking on Astralis. This one's going to be close. For some reason during the end of the split, we heard Astralis, all of them saying, we're picking Fnatic no matter what. Even though Fnatic didn't finish dead last in their group, I don't think, they were still the team chosen. And that's kind of important to note, because Astralis, they've looked fairly good this split. Obviously, second seed overall, BDS winning the entire thing, who we get to talk about next. But um, here, I think Astralis will win 2-0 against Fnatic. That's a solid prediction for me, and if Fnatic do not win this split, they cannot go to MSI. They will not have enough championship points at all. That's what has been said by other analysts, and I think it's important to note that. Fnatic will be going out swinging. They want to make every single match count. And I think when you're in that sort of mentality, you kind of have a lot of do or die and heroic play attempts. Fnatic, I think, have ramped up during this split. Starting slow and finishing quite strong. Not the strongest, but quite strong and that's kind of allowed them this sort of um, cushion that has been building up and I think going into these best of threes I don't think that they will have gotten the same amount of practice and yes you've technically got the same amount of time as everyone else to practice I don't think their practice will be as heavy in terms of what they've done because they've been more practicing towards actually making playoffs this split than relatively doing well in groups. It's hard to explain but I think that their workload would have been a lot more heavier in the start of the year during the regular split and focusing on actually qualifying for the group stage and then you get to basically I don't think they'll have had the practice for this patch yet. Other teams were more so experimenting during the regular split because they were kind of getting to grips on the patch that they were playing in the group stage and then the patch that they will be playing for playoffs. That's how I think that other teams have worked in my mind and I don't think Fnatic will have had that same sort of experience because they got a new Ross member, you have to remember. It's been four weeks of playing with Oscar in. One week is a break week, technically. They've not had that long to gel as a team. And yes, you've played nine games, and Oscar in has kind of sorted. Well, he's sort of slotted into this Fnatic roster. But, and this is a huge but, I have to say. He isn't going to be playoff ready. Best of threes are a good way to edge you in, but I don't think Fnatic have that sort of strength yet to do well. And I think coming into summer, with the amount of time you get, you basically get a full month of May to practice together. I think certain teams will be more likely to want that than um, go to MSI because MSI is technically a burnout tournament for some but I think that's also Mad Lions quote unquote being a burnout team who only turn up realistically for playoffs just a thought but um here I think Astralis will win 2-0 in a 
comfortable sort of fashion. But you have to realize that's just my mindset on Fnatic and their adaptability to something new. Maybe a little shot. Let's get it. Matchup of the week. SK BDS. Yes, we did talk about BDS relatively recent, but it was a stomp against Koi. So we haven't really seen a strong BDS yet. As for SK, they're one of the teams we haven't talked about this split, and I last split was doubting SK heavily. I've ordered a jersey for him. Hopefully I'm going to do the uh, breakdown in said jersey. That would actually make it a bit better. It arrives next week sometime, so who knows? Maybe we even do the breakdown live. But no, I think this game's going to go SK 2-1. It's a bit of a shock for me to say that. I looked at the regular split and how these two teams faced off throughout this year. SK and BDS are one to one. They've both won a game against each other. SK's was more recent and I've gone on recency bias in terms of this best of one. I think alike to what I said about, um, who was it? I said it about Matt, didn't I? Adapting to the new quicker. It might have been them, who knows. But I think SK adapt to new a lot better than what other teams do. And here against BDS, a team who I think did experiment a little bit more during their split, although they cruised comfortably to a first place, I think SK will beat them to the post. It's hard to obviously predict this one because SK's regular split, you could say, shimmied them down the pole. They had a rough end to the split and more so just a very solid start. And uh, BDS, consistently good every week. That's all you need to know about them. But um, <laughs> I think, yes, BDS will pick up a game. But SK... I think will be the better team in a sort of best of situation and probably will knock BDS down a peg who I think could honestly be a shock this could be a shock factor game let's be honest but it is a close series in my mind and lastly Easter Monday is rounded out with Koi G2, what a lovely treat. We've got a finals rematch from 2022 happening early in playoffs. And you don't understand, this game is hard to predict. Yes, Koi played absolutely terribly during that final week. But it's Koi. And Trimby and Comp last split played terribly during the regular time and then came into group stage and Koi just became this absolute monster. And that's the Koi you kind of have to expect when it gets to the playoffs. It's a team who builds for best ofs. They're a textbook team that just adapt and I think Koi's struggles weren't because they were playing bad. Yes, they were playing bad, and their drafts kind of did suck a lot, especially in that final week. But you have to realize, you look at what was played by certain players. I'm going to talk about this Corky for a bit here. Corky is a, is a meta that stood the test of time. Is it, I believe... He will have the changes to him coming in to group stage. That will mean he, his presence will probably skyrocket a little bit more. And so 
when you know Aziz in meta, Corky's presence rises. And I think that's why Koi were playing these more weirder sort of scaly mid picks. Because Larson's pool this split wasn't just a Zir and maybe a Silas or something along those lines. He was a bit more experimental with the TF as well as his uh, other picks. I can't remember them off the top of my head, but he was a bit more experimental with what he was doing. And I think that style that Koi was showing was more so experimental than trying to actually win this split. I think they're learning from how G2 play. G2 are considered a team who just play whatever because they want to. The fact that we've seen a Zach mid, the only team the LEC to pull this pick out randomly, they were more so last split fooling around. And this split they've been a bit more focused in, I would say. But yeah, I think G2 will win 2-0. But I do also think that Koi were prepping more for groups than they were for uh, playoffs. Not playoffs, for... Uh, words lost my head. I So... They were more prepping for playoffs than they were for regular split, and it's understandable because when you come into playoffs, you technically coming you're coming in in this new format on the same foot as everyone else. The only advantage that the higher C gets is side select. Yes, that's impactful, but. You have to realize this. Highest seed means side select, but that's it. You don't get an extra advantage. It's fairly even in terms of the playing field. So actually prepping more for a group stage and playoff onwards sort of run makes more sense to me than practicing for the regular split. Genuinely. I think that, and teams like Koi and G2 were more prepping for uh, group stage. I think G2 more prepped a little bit more for the regular split, but like, it still to me feels that uh, essentially all these teams, I you could see who prepped for groups and who's kind of prepping for regular split and some people may not realize that some people probably will just try to predict based on the form during the regular season and that's okay for you guys to do that I'm also taking into a fact that how playoffs are in terms of there's no lower bracket start for teams they all start upper it's no loss to some teams and that's why I think Koi as a whole are kind of probably expecting to lose to G2. And then you think, who are they going to face? BDS or SK? Well, SK is a team that G tends to be a decent matchup for Koi. But Koi definitely have the better record in playoffs against them. BDS, untested in playoffs. They got taken out quickly last split, and this split, I think they were more focused on doing well in the regular split than playoffs, so chances are, Koi will, when they face off against either of those two teams, basically stop. That's how I, my mindset is. So, regardless of how this goes, I think we're going to get some good matchups this weekend. Anyway, thank you for joining me. I know I've rambled on quite a bit for a lot of these games and kind of gone off a bit of topic in terms of the actual matchups and focus more on how the split is, but you, you kind of have to. But thank you very much for joining me. 
If you enjoyed it, leave a like down below. Subscribe if you're new or if you want to. And I will see you guys Sunday. He says. Peace out.